It's time for Windows Weekly. We sent Paul Therod on assignment. Tough one, too. He went to Maui for the Qualcomm Snack Snapdragon the Tech Summit. He's there right now and will be joined on this show by Don McGuire. He's the head of marketing at Qualcomm. And Ryan Shrout from PC Perspective. And, of course, Mary Jo Foley. We're all going to talk about the brand new Windows on ARM laptops announced today and the new Snapdragon 845 processor. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 547, recorded Wednesday, December 6th, 2017. Windows on ARM. Windows Weekly is literally brought to you by Sonic, Twit's 10 gigabit fiber internet service provider. Join Sonic's internet revolution as they bring fast, affordable internet, phone, and TV to homes and businesses all over California. Visit sonic.com slash twit to sign up for service and receive your first month free. And by WordPress. Plans start at just $4 a month. Find out why 29% of all the web runs on WordPress. Get your brand new website today at wordpress.com slash windows and save 15%. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Oh boy, it's time for Windows Weekly and a very special edition. For those of you tuning in live, we're starting a little later because Paul's on Hawaii time. <laughs> what a lucky dog. Uh, big announcements this week. Joining us, of course, as always, Mary Jo Foley. She's in Manhattan, all about Microsoft.com. <laughs> and Paul Therott, he is in Maui. Yep, the land of the midday sun. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's well, not terrible here. What brings you to Maui? So uh, Qualcomm is having their Snapdragon Tech Summit here this year. Uh, last year it was in sunny downtown New York City. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this year it's in a slightly nicer place. No offense, Mary Jo, I, I like New York too. But um, yeah, you know, the, obviously they've got lots of um, partners and also, you know, the press from various parts of the world, Asia, uh, Pacific, as well as Europe and the United States, North America. So centrally located, maybe. <laughs> it doesn't hurt yeah. that it's a tropical paradise. I know. It does not hurt. Yep. So today I was... Say, is this true? They said it's the biggest gathering of tech press like Wire ever? wireless tech press no 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 outside of uh, mobile world congress yeah that's pretty huge though to say that it's right not, it's not yeah so i was that was an interesting comment um there there's only about 300 tech press here so this is not like something on the order of um you know like tech ed or whatever or, yeah. or uh, whatever we're calling it this CES. year <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no but but for the mobile uh, world like actually that's that's really big yeah. right for mo just for specifically mobile so uh, yeah, obviously, Mobile World Congress is the is the big one. The biggest. But this one, is for yeah. a, you know, remember, this is for a single company, and obviously, it's for a key company in that ecosystem. But um, it's it's a big deal um, on that note for sure. So, um, where do you, how do you want to go with this? I know you have guests. Yeah, so we're going to bring out two guests. We should start with the news um, uh, because we are not quite ready with the guests. Yeah, but no, that's good. We'll do. We'll start with the news. We'll do a break, and then and we'll get the guests in there. Uh, yeah. Qual this is actually called the Squaw Qual Squalcom Cap Nap. It's Squal this is the Qualcomm <laughs> Snapdragon Tech Summit, and that's they right. did announce the 845, but I think they got scooped just a little teeny weeny <laughs> bit by Microsoft, bit, yeah. which yeah, announced yeah. that finally I mean, WoA is here, Windows on ARM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they did that announcement here, right? And so uh, right. there are three days of keynotes, so three days of uh, announcements. There'll be a third day tomorrow, which will focus on the 5G stuff and some of the other initiatives they're working on. But the big news today was the 845, which is obviously the next generation mobile processor. And the big news yesterday, at least from my perspective, there was more to it than this, but from for, I think from all of our perspectives at Windows Weekly, was the announcement of the first Snapdragon-based 
uh, Windows 10 PCs. So uh, who are the manufacturers and when do we so the, get them and how much? Yeah. You may recall um, a little bit of rumor <laughs> or, or news, as we might have called it, in December 2016, um, that the first ARM-based PCs would arrive in December 2017. And so we've announced them, but they're not actually shipping now. So the two that we know about are the HP Elite X2. Um, and HP, by the way, sells an Elite X2 today that's based on Intel uh, chipsets and so forth. And I'm sure they're going to update that probably announce it at CS and it will look like the version that they showed off here. But the one they showed off here is thinner and lighter and gets better battery life and it's based on Qualcomm chipsets. Um, and also uh, an Asus device as well. Um, both, of the, I'm, I'm sorry, I should say, uh, we know that Lenovo is going to announce something uh, next month at CS. We know that other PC manufacturers uh, have said that they're on board with this initiative so we can expect to see those devices po probably at CS, right? I think that would be the obvious time frame uh, for those announcements. Um, I, we've got, you know, we've got Don McGuire coming out later from Qualcomm, and I have some questions. I have some questions in general. I have some questions for him um, sort of in the wake of this announcement, right? Because uh, in some ways, there were a couple of surprises. Um, <laughs> one of them has to do with the timing, right? So here we are at the end of 2017. We've announced uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor-based PCs. They've announced an 845, right? And so how does that work? Um, and also the fact that these devices run Windows 10s exclusively, so, so, at least so far, uh, which was a surprise to me, uh, because I feel like the That's always disappointing. It, I'm yeah, so uh, it's two sides to that. Upgradable to Windows 10 Pro yeah. a, for a fee for fifty dollars or for free? No, for free. For free. Um, for free for a limited time. And in Asus's materials, they said till September 2018, which is longer than what Microsoft has said. So this um, is yeah. kind of like the Surface March. laptop then. This is... Yeah, yeah, but, I think that's fair. Is there uh, a reason why Windows 10 S for these ARM devices? Well, see, that, that that's... Uh, we're going to ask that question because I, mm -hmm. I'm i a little confused. But I, I would say, you know, when you think about the future of the PC and, and you look at it from Microsoft's perspective, from like sort of a platform perspective, there are two big initiatives and three if you want to divide the second one into two parts. The first is Windows 10 S, right, which is the simpler non-legacy version of Windows 10, smart... Uh, but not necessarily ready right you know today for everybody. Um, there's the always connected PC initiative, which brings always uh, on connectivity, um, better battery life, uh, instant on, and so forth. And then you get the Qualcomm piece of it, where you get uh, really sharp improvements in battery life and instant on uh, performance, for example. So um, I, I sort of viewed these things as three separate things. Um, in some ways, what we're seeing here is a combination of at least two of those. So that was a little unexpected. It's kind of interesting, but that's something we should. We should talk to Qualcomm mm -hmm. about. <laughs> yeah, I think my guess is 10s is the reason they're going with 10s, or they'll, the reason they'll say they're going with 10s is for the battery, right? So they'll say <laughs> we've already shown that 10s gets longer battery life than any version of Windows 10, so that's why we put it on there. It's also um, what I think of as like the reliability of that yeah. kind of thing. In other words, mm -hmm. when you uh, limit the experience to the store apps, essentially. You're, yeah. You have a sort of a guarantee of how those things are going to behave on the system. Whereas if you start introducing x86 apps, even on Intel, right, there's a lot yeah. of unreliability there, depending on the apps you're running. Um, yeah. And it, when you add the emulation factor on Qualcomm, it's it's kind of an unknown. And I think a lot of us are, are particularly interested in testing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think well, obviously what everyone's shooting for here is the best possible experience. And yeah. when you think about the way that Microsoft has marketed Windows 10 S, a Qualcomm-based PC kind of fits into that very nicely because those customers, in Microsoft's eyes, value those things that are inherent to the system, you know, the reliability, mm -hmm. the battery life, uh, and the consistency. Will all the uh, new hardware run on an 845, or is are they going to use some? Mm -mm. No. Nope. <laughs> 835 for what they've announced. Yeah, Yeah. so the, the, right, that is what okay. they've announced, although uh, That's based the on older an Snapdragon. Yeah, based on a comment that was uh, said on stage today, there will be 845-based systems at some point, right? I, I don't know if that means six months or nine months or a year or whatever, but um, that ap appears to be in the in the cards as well. Mm -hmm. But not right away, right? The first gen. What other? Yeah, I mean, it, the, I shouldn't even say older. 835 is the current Snapdragon, mm -hmm. and 845 is the next generation, coming next generation. Yep. What's yep. what are their specs? Uh, eight gigs of RAM, four gigs. What kind of what kind of hardware yeah. are we going to get here? Then? Yeah. Uh, the basic so, is four gigs. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mary yeah. Jo. I was just going to say, the Asus one, they said four gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage for 599 8 gigs, 256 gig of storage, 799 
Yeah, and the HP didn't say. Don't know yet, uh, right. I'm not sure on the existing Elite X2, but I'd be surprised if it mm -hmm. came with less than eight. I, I suppose on a system is where you're called, focusing. I'm sorry. Is it called Elite X2? Because there's an Envy X2. Or is I'm the sorry. Envy... Yeah. Okay. I believe it's. No, yeah, I, I, I wasn't it's sure if there were two different brands, yeah, like the Intel are. and the. <laughs> there yeah. are. I'm screwing it up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, it's Envy X2. Sorry about that. Envy um, X2? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but it seems like on the NV X2, sorry, an X86, probably 8 gigs is the minimum, but they might go with 4 in this version because, um, again, we're, we're kind of optimizing for battery life over everything else. Right. And the type of user that would want this machine is more concerned with that than, say, raw performance. Do developers mm -hmm. have to change their apps? These, you'd have to recompile everything for Windows on ARM. What does this mean for apps, for software? If you're a store app, it doesn't mean anything because you get that you automatically. In the okay. Deal. Yeah, it's 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 a checkbox. In fact, it's checked by default. And so, when you create an app in the store, you know that's a capability you get. This dates back to the Windows RT days. It's just a and you know phone as well. Um, it's it's a capability that just exists in the platform. The the open question here, though, is of course x86 you know desktop apps that you might download from the internet, um, Google Chrome, iTunes, whatever. Uh, out of the box, obviously, those things aren't going to run on Windows 10 S. Um, if you upgrade to Pro, they will, and that's you know this is the thing I think a lot of people are super mm -hmm. interested in, just to see what that looks like, you know, on on ARM. Yeah, and the emul yeah. you know the emulator to me was the thing I was surprised they actually announced and had ready yesterday <laughs> because they said they were going to do that, but I was thinking because of that threat from Intel over patents that maybe they wouldn't actually have that ready as part of yeah. it yeah, right yeah, off yeah. the bat. But it is. Um, and they told me when I talked to them, they said, you know how we do 16-bit windows on 64-bit windows with windows on windows? You know, the wow thing. They said, we extended yes, that. And that's how we're going to emulate 16-bit um, yeah. Win32 apps on top of ARM. Right. And if that you look at the yeah, sense. if you look at the diagrams they have, it actually says the wow abstraction layer is there on top of the emulator. It's, so that is how they're doing it. But it makes it's consistent. That's the you yeah. know the, the states back literally twenty years when they made Windows NT and mm -hmm. it was platform independent, right? And we didn't yep. you know for most of its lifespan we've been running on Intel basically or x eighty six, um, but that capability was always there. It was one of the things that made Windows mm -hmm. RT a possibility, whatever that was mm -hmm. five six years ago, um, and it's enabling this today as well. Yeah. So Paul, All right, so you, we do you, have. Well, I'm sorry. You, we have our guests. We do have a guest. Okay. Well, let me let's take a break. <laughs> can you can you hear our? Are you in? Are you okay. in? Or are you out? All right. All right. So, we're so we're, we'll take a little break and then um, uh, we will we'll get we'll, to our. Then next we're going to grill this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll even tell you who this guy is. And 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 I'm I still think there's a lot more to say about uh, these things. These not just the chips, but the the laptop. There, I have questions galore, but uh, we'll get all of mm -hmm. those answered in just a little bit as we continue. Uh, live from the Qualcomm Tech Summit, the Snapdragon Tech Summit going on. You know, I feel bad for Paul. He's got to be in Maui and all that, but um, it's okay. It's okay. Our show, <laughs> our show today brought to you by Sonic. Twits, literally brought to you by Sonic. Twits 10 gigabit fiber internet service provider. You kind of spoiled me, Sonic. Dane Jasper, our good friend, uh, the founder of Sonic, has realized that you can bring the internet revolution at a very affordable price. You don't have to play the games these big internet service or providers are playing. And now, more than ever, we need Sonic. And if you're lucky enough to be living in Northern California, <laughs> you can get Sonic. We all need it, but you can get it. So the internet infrastructure, obviously, in the United States, not only is the infrastructure itself failing, so is the regulatory situation. we got too many people paying too much for, let's face it, crappy cable internet. And those companies are getting worse and worse. Enter Sonic, your white knight, your hero. They deliver fast, affordable internet and phone and TV to homes and businesses all over California for a price that is unbelievable. And they don't cap their internet. They stand up for their users. They stand up for privacy. They're everything you want an ISP to be. In fact, the Electronic Frontier Foundation gives Sonic green check marks all the way across in every single category. 
Sonic delivers residential and business fiber to the premise networks with gigabit connectivity in San Francisco, in the San Francisco North Bay Area, the East Bay Area. I don't want to make you jealous, but listen to what you get. 15 email accounts, a gigabyte of storage, personal web hosting, a new domain, fax line service, a home phone connection with unlimited local and long distance calling. And of course, 1,000 up to speeds of up to 1,000 megabits per second for $40 a month. If they can do it, why can't all these other guys do it? They are profitable. This is how it ought to be. And they stand up for your privacy. They don't have any bandwidth caps. You could switch from your local carrier so you could even keep your phone number. Sonic's customer advocacy is paving the way for a better state of Internet access in America. And I just, I just want to support them because they're fighting the good fight for all of us. Join the Internet Revolution. Visit Sonic, S-O-N-I-C, sonic.com slash twit to get your first month of Sonic Internet and phone service free. Plus, bundle it with Dish and save $120 on your Sonic bill. Visit sonic.com slash twit to find out if they're available in your area. And if they're not, call them and say, I want it. All right. Guest audio on Skype 3. I am turning up the volume, turning up the sound. We are headed back to Hawaii, my my future home. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. And Paul, let's uh, introduce your guest. Yeah, so this is uh, Don McGuire, a VP of Global Product Marketing for Qualcomm. Um, he's in the hot seat today. You need to sit farther <laughs> away from him. Here? Oh, I do. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to help. But it's Maybe great to have you, Don. Thank you for joining us. Yo, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you lead the uh, charge, uh, Paul, since you're, you're sitting there. But I take it we want to start by talking about the 845, right? Well, actually, yeah, let's, let's step back and, and, and start with uh, Windows 10 and ARM, right? Because Okay. Uh, you got it. This is... I mean, for me, you know, we've been waiting for this for a year, and it's really interesting. It, it kind of sitting on this for all of 2017, and then it happens, and it's like this explosion of questions. You know, um, I'm just curious, you know, from Qualcomm's perspective. I mean, obviously, you guys have your uh, message around battery life advantages and so forth. I mean, what's what's the big opportunity here? I mean, how are we differentiating? Let, let's kind of dive into what you're doing on on the PC, I guess. Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, you're right. We've been ever since the WinHack announcement, right, which was actually December 4th of last year. Um, we've been on this journey with Microsoft and the ecosystem partners uh, to bring these devices to market. And we're sort of now one step closer with the announcement of the HP and the Asus devices. And then upcoming at CES, uh, there'll be a Lenovo event, as Cristiano teased out yesterday. So we're excited that the three first uh, devices from three of the world's largest PC OEMs are going to be coming to market. And um, so that's it's a significant milestone and how we kind of rally the ecosystem in a, in a pretty short period of time uh, to move in this direction in delivering the always connected PC value proposition that that we believe in. So from that perspective, from Qualcomm's perspective, um, we believe the Snapdragon platform is actually really, really well suited to the convergence of what's happening with mobile compute. Um, smartphones getting more powerful, screens are large, you can do more compute type tasks with your, with your smartphone, which, by the way, has since 2011 eaten into PC TAM, as we all know, right, significantly. Um, and, and then the, the tablet came in and kind of took a little bit out of it, but then the tablet sort of has kind of fallen by the wayside and become more of a third screen entertainment sort of babysitter um, device. So uh, there's been all this, th all these things happening. This has been a huge inflection point. Um, we think that's occurred. Uh, that's made the the timing of this um, perfect to deliver these sort of thinner, lighter, more mobile type uh, devices with the capabilities that everybody really likes and loves about their smartphone to make computing, mobile computing, truly mobile computing. Um, and so. We think the platform aligns really well to that value proposition, and 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 we also see growth in the segment of PC TAM, um, which is really the two-in-one space, right? The thin and light convertible detachable two-in-one space. That's where the mainstream growth is is really happening. Desktops are declining, even traditional notebooks are declining, um, and besides gaming, which is more niche, and there's growth there. It's really mainstream is growing in this sort of 
ultra mobile sort of on the go types of devices. And, and so that's where we think the sweet spot is and that's where we're focused. Um, and we think that we have a good chance of success there. I, I mean, the, the big, the big number one, I guess the number one question would be just performance, right? I mean, um, I think you guys, you know, you've got, uh, 20 plus hours of battery life claimed. And, you know, obviously people will test that and we'll see how these things kind of fall out. We kind of, we know where Intel based PCs are. I look back at the list of PCs I had reviewed this year and it ranges from five something to in one extreme case, 11 hours of battery life, real world. Um, so, you know, the average is somewhere in the middle. So obviously 20, 22 hours is significantly better than that. And, and you've got the standby times of up to a month and so forth. And that's all fantastic. But you know, the, the, the PC is kind of a legacy world. And we have all these legacy apps, and this is the, something Microsoft is trying to escape with Windows 10 S, obviously. But it's it's a tough, you know, it's tough with people letting go of the past. I mean, what have you seen from a performance perspective, right? With, and I guess there are two sides to that. There's just the basic system performance. You're running Windows, and the apps that come with Windows, the apps that come from the store, and then also the emulation experience, you know, for x86 apps. What does what does that look like uh, now, a year later? Uh, actually, I think we're we're pretty excited about what we're seeing as these devices become more commercially ready. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we've been testing them for quite a while. Microsoft's been testing them for quite a while, and and, and as well as the OEMs. Um, uh, so there's like I think you can kind of segment performance into different buckets. Yeah. Um, and and we really look at performance from a user perspective, not a synthetic benchmark perspective, right? I mean, look, I played the synthetic benchmark game for four and a half years <laughs> because I led product marketing for the PC business at <laughs> Intel. Um, so um, I, I get I get how the game is played, but but it is all about experiences at the end of the day and and how the the user who's going to either purchase this or get it you know eventually in the long term from hopefully from from their IT department at work. Uh, is what is that user experience? And so from a performance perspective, I heard you mention earlier about 10S. Um, we all know what Microsoft is doing with 10S and why they're doing that, right? They want 10S to be like iOS, Mac OS, right? They, I get it. We all get it. Um, and, um, and it's going to be a journey that they're, that they're on. Um, uh, and, it, you know, creating the universal app store, making it more secure, all that delivers benefits obviously to to the end user mm -hmm. um and, and so that's good there's goodness there um and obviously that universal sort of windows experience is no you know there's absolutely no issue with that from a from a platform perspective yeah, when we that's what I would expect. yeah and and as far as what the oems ship with these devices again that's something that they negotiate with Microsoft. Obviously, there's costs associated with the different OS levels at Microsoft. That that's something that they negotiate with the OEMs. 10s absolutely, absolutely, obviously gives bomb cost relief to the OEMs because it is a cheaper um, uh, form of Windows. Um, uh, but as you, I think, mentioned earlier too, Paul, all these devices can be upgraded for free to 10 Pro um, through pr pretty much through the end of the year uh, of 2018. So, um, so whatever the user wants to do, if it ships with 10s and they want to upgrade to Pro, they can do that. Um, if they want to keep it, if they want to try 10s and see if that serves their needs and have no need to upgrade to Pro, so be it. Um, and so, uh, so that's kind of how that's rolling itself through. As far as performance goes, um, there's the emulation layer you guys were talking about earlier, um, and you know that's really kind of what what Microsoft is doing with their software. We yeah. really don't have play a huge part in that, but uh, but what we're seeing as far as upgrading to Pro and using different applications, um, most of the sort of legacy applications or applications that people might um, have a have a question about tend to lie in the gaming space. Yeah, a lot of them yeah. tend to lie in the gaming space, especially the AAA gaming space. I think 90%, 90% or so of, of some of like the 64-bit apps are gaming apps. Um, but things like Chrome and, and other popular applications, we are working really closely with Microsoft to make sure that those are working properly and they're optimized. When, the user, when a user upgrades to Pro um, and they let's say they download Chrome for the first time, um, you'll see a, probably a couple millisecond or maybe even a half a second difference when it first loads, um, but then as you use it, it'll it'll you'll use it normally like you would anything else. And even though on a on a benchmark you could say this device is 50% slower in you know downloading Chrome or loading Chrome than an X86 device, that could mean a half a second. And yeah, you can play the percentage game, but is a user really going to notice the difference? So, um, so that's what we're going to see, right? We're going to we're going to get these devices out there. We're going to get people using them, 
um, and and we'll see what the response is and, and if they have a huge issue with this app or that app. And I know that there are some people that have apps that they have to absolutely use for whether it's for work or for school or for something that they do from a productivity standpoint. And um, and I know that Microsoft uh, as well as um, as ourselves are trying to make sure that the top 100 apps at least that have been legacy apps work as seamlessly as possible on these devices so that the user doesn't see a huge difference in performance. Okay, so this is almost like, like a backwards compatibility thing on Xbox where they can kind of tailor it on an app by app basis or whatever. In the right, and you know, they've, they've done the math. You know, you, you want to cover 90% of all the people, right? There's yeah. going to be the outliers and the outliers are going to be the outliers and eventually I think the, the, those apps will get there. Microsoft has made a huge push to get more and more of the ecosystem into the store. Um, I think you mentioned earlier some some applications that I think you'll see actually come into the store um, before these devices launch, and uh, and and that ecosystem keeps growing. So I think that's also a positive move, again, so that the user may not even feel like they need to upgrade to Pro, um, especially when it comes to things like music and and other things. Um, so we'll see. Interesting. You guys. Do you what have about, anything? Um, Visual Studio running on this. Uh, um, if if uh, specifically Visual Studio, I can't tell you for sure. If it's one of the top 100 x86 or x64 bit apps, then it will be covered, and it will be make it will make we will make sure it's compatible. Um, if it's if it's an outlier, then it may take longer. Yeah, you know, I, I sort of like, that's a, obviously a power user. Right. It is. I don't know if a Visual Studio user would probably be and buying then, one of these devices. Yeah. Um, yeah. And may need a it's more. It's funny. A lot of machine. people asked I, yesterday. A lot of people were asking me about that one for some reason. So. I, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about the two, even just the two devices we know about, is that you know when you go back to the original 10s launch and you look, there was a Surface laptop, which was a great device, and then a bunch of education devices, which were very low end. I mean, these are not very low end devices. These are nice. You know, that's. Mm -hmm. And I think this is kind of, uh, you know, 10S, I'm, uh, you know, half unsold on it, obviously. But I, I, one thing it really needs is good hardware, right? And so it, at least these things aren't, they're not, you know, low-end kind of education devices. They're for, you know, I, I almost said IT pros. They're for, you know, mainstream business users or whatever, mainstream consumers as well. Um, they look, you know, they look nice. Um, let me see what else. I, I, I have other questions about this, but I'm, not, not all of them are appropriate for you. I don't want you to defend Terry at Meyerson, for example, but why don't you try? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a Terry Meyerson question, but not, not for you. No, I do too. I love Terry. <laughs> um, I, can so, I throw a question in? Yeah, please do. Okay. Um, so we, we kind of touched on this earlier, but why? I'm curious why Qualcomm. And Microsoft, I guess it's half a Microsoft question, half a Qualcomm. But why go to market first with 835-based devices when you guys are there at your conference talking about 845? I mean, I don't That's think most great, consumers great will know the difference, yeah. but it's still – people are asking that too. Like, yeah, why would I, I buy this when I know 845 <laughs> is coming, yeah. right? Yeah, great question. Um, this, really, this really goes back to the innovation cycle, the legacy innovation cycle of the PC industry – and the innovation cycle of the mobile industry. The legacy innovation cycle of the PC industry, as you probably all well know, from a silicon perspective, is slow. Um, the cadence on introducing new um, sort of process nodes, new, uh, new processors, new platforms, is a heck of a lot slower than it is in the mobile space. We have been on the cadence to introduce a you know, all new platform on an annual basis, sometimes on a semi-annual basis, um, which is much faster than the PC ecosystem has been upgrading from a silicon perspective. So there's going to be a little bit of a of a transitional period as we bring these devices to market. We talked about this with Microsoft. Um, we are we are rolling this program out in waves. Um, we are in wave one, as we like to call it. Um, but this is a long term journey. I think what we are going to work towards is a more symbiotic um, inflection point as far as how we overlay our timing of our innovation cycle with Windows and, and RS3, RS4, RS5, um, as well as with the OEM ecosystem who wants to bring these devices to market. It's going to be a little bit strange at first because we're going to have this transition period. I think once we get into wave two, you'll see sort of a catch up 
Um, and going forward, you'll see us sync our innovation cycle more with Microsoft and the OEMs so that these PC type devices, mobile PC type devices will be on a similar innovation cycle as the smartphones that a lot of these OEMs, both the current ones as well as future ones will be also delivering on our next generation platforms. In fact, a lot of the OEMs that we've been talking to that you'll see coming out for wave two right. have already said, we want to get these two things on the same cycle. So if we introduce a smartphone based on 845, we want to introduce a PC based on 845, almost at the same time. So uh, so we're, we're not there yet, obviously. In this first round, um, in order to get these first three devices out the door, we had to choose 835. 845 was based on you know Redstone 3 and all the things that had to go into it. 845 just wasn't ready. Um, mm -hmm. But I think going forward, you'll see probably us get closer with this next generation. And then by the whatever we're announcing, hopefully in Hawaii next year, because um, <laughs> I think everybody unanimously <laughs> agrees this is a great place to do it. If I get a uh, vote. <laughs> Reykjavik. Um, but uh, uh, that that you'll see um, a closer alignment there and you'll see, OK, this makes more sense. Right. They're announcing Snapdragon X and all the OEMs are lined up, the ecosystems lined up. We know it's going to launch on Redstone X, right? And and it's going to upgrade to Redstone Y. All those things will make more sense, I think, as we move into like the next wave of this. And I think by wave three is when you'll see actually full alignment. Yeah, but it's going to take some time to get the innovation cycles to mesh. These, especially these traditional PC OEMs, they're, they're not used to the quickness. Sure. That yeah. we've brought that we that we have in our in in the mobile ecosystem on revving these these devices and getting them out the door. Some of the more mobile first OEMs, Asus obviously is familiar with it because they they build all their smartphones based on Snapdragon, so they understand it. Um, new OEMs that come into this more mobile first OEMs will completely get it. And by the way, have asked us to close that gap as fast as we possibly can with Microsoft. So great question. And I think it's just going to be, we're in this sort of transition time. We had to make a call. And so we made it to get these devices to market as a starting point, go with 835 and let's try to align the cycles more closely as we move into wave two and three. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I, um, I'm just thinking about the schedule. I mean, it, it, it seems like it can work. You know, most uh, big mobile announcements tend to come toward the beginning of the year, Mobile World Congress and so forth. Most big PC announcements seem to come toward the beginning of the year, typically at CES. I mean, you know, I, I expect, I mean, um, I'm not probing, but I mean, I expect we'll see some more action at CES, obviously. Uh, um, you know, that will be interesting. Um, I learned today, I, I haven't been able to dive into this. It happened right before I got on the show, but the version of the 835 that you're using for PCs is different in some ways from the mobile. Can you speak to that at all? Or what, what's yes, happening it, there? it is. Um, it's got a different part number. I mean, it's still, it's still 835. It's got a, a moniker next to it. I think it's PC or something like that. Um, uh, but we have, we have an increased uh, the performance from a gigahertz perspective. So it's a 2.6 gigahertz part. Yep. Um, versus the 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 first mobile 835 part that we announced a year ago. Remember, we announced 835 before we announced with Terry Myerson at WinHack that we were doing this partnership. So there was some catch up to be done. Right. And as we again, as we made this decision to go with 835, we we looked at it from an architectural perspective and we said, okay, what we what enhancements will we need to make and what could mm -hmm. we make um, to this to uh, uh, to um, make it more aligned with with these devices and that's one of the decisions that we did make so we boosted performance um uh and so it's a higher gig part gigahertz from a gigahertz perspective i think you'll see in the future that we will move to more of a tiering um methodology okay. as we expand the group of devices that our premium tier platform lands in we've already got smartphones xr you know standalone hmds pcs automotive Etc. I think you'll see us. Um, in some ways, it will be more complex, but in some ways, it'll be clearer yeah. that we're going to move towards a tiering structure, yeah, even within our premium platform. Different variants of the same core, right? With different Because we have two, four, six, and eight today, and it's kind of clear, and we get that, you know. But within eight is where we haven't had to tier before. But I think we're going to move in that direction. So you're going to see us take our premium tier platform mm -hmm. and actually provide tiers. 
And then you'll mm -hmm. see those tiers land in different types of devices, depending on the architecture that it needs to be able to deliver a great experience, whether it's an HMD, a PC, an automotive infotainment system, you know, whatever that might be. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other one, this maybe is not the right question for you, but I, you said something earlier that suggested this might be the case, which is that right now we're seeing Windows 10 S on these first couple of PCs. Is it at least uh, possible that over the next year or whatever, uh, that other PC makers or the same PC makers will bring other devices to market that actually ship out of the box with something other than Windows 10 S, uh, Windows 10 Pro or whatever? Or is yeah, that it's a, really is their part? call? Um, yeah. you know, we've, we've stayed out of that conversation for the, for the most part, because it is really a conversation between Microsoft and mm -hmm. the OEMs and, and for the OEMs, a part of it's bomb, right? Part yeah. of it's their cost structure, um, based on the price point, they want to bring some of these devices to market in. Um, and part of it is, you know, a part of it is what is the best experience to preload, um, yeah. onto the device. I think what you'll see is more diversification of the type of windows. And again, this, I don't, I don't claim to understand how 10s how microsoft wants 10s to permeate and how broadly <laughs> they want it to permeate in the future very very uh, broadly but i'm sure they want it to permeate <laughs> yeah. broader than it is today um yeah. clearly uh but you know we talked about enterprise as a second sort of mm -hmm. wave of of a target audience I and mean, cristiano talked about it terry talked about it in his comments yesterday um once we get there let's say wave three wave two wave three I think I think we'll have to look at that. I think right, we'll, right. I think some of these devices will have to ship with more of an enterprise focused skew of Windows, yeah. um, and, and so we'll have to make make sure that we calibrate for that. Um, I mean, you know, the, the this first wave again, it was really it was well they could launch with Pro or they could launch with S, and I think Microsoft's <laughs> preference was S, um, and sure. I think the OEMs were like, well. You know, it's our first device and we want to make sure we get it out at a good price point and all these factors. You know, obviously our platform helps them do, do that, but also, hey, if we can get costs down, keep them under control, deliver these at good price points, that's all. That's a that's a winner. And with Microsoft extending the free trial or the free upgrade, because um, understanding they have a lot of work to do on the adoption curve for 10S, yeah. I think it, 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 it all worked for everybody and everybody kind of agreed that it was the right thing to do. But I think you're, you'll definitely see a diversification, I think, in the future as we learn more and as we start delivering uh, different tiers of devices. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And how about, you're going to put wireless in all of these, right? So we can have give a gigabit wireless in all our new laptops. Correct. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, so because the Snapdragon uh, mobile platform is all, has an integrated modem right. in it, right? Um, so these will these will start first with our X16 integrated modem in the A35 platform, yeah. and then um, in wave two it'll be our X20, which is integrated on A45. So up to gigabit speeds uh, for wave one and multi gigabit speeds for wave two. Also, and remember on top of that we have our 11AD Wi-Fi. Um, as integrated onto our platform. So that's going to actually make the Wi-Fi experience pretty cool as far as multi-gigabit Wi-Fi. How is that different from what well. we're doing now? Well, it, everything on an x86 platform is discrete. Right. Right. So, so you know. So is it faster because it's on chip? Um, it's, it's, well, it's, it's faster because it's a better part. <laughs> um, well, I knew you'd uh, say is, that. But, but, I've been waiting uh, all week to hear someone from Boston. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's, 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 yeah. it's more compact and more efficient. Yeah. Right. Um, and one of the things we talked about battery life a little bit, um, and yes, the battery life is, it's, it's, it's beyond our wildest dreams as we started actually seeing the, as we started testing these things and you saw a little bit in the video yesterday where, you know, 22 plus hours and still going, um, the thermal efficiency of Snapdragon is amazing. And, and that comes from our roots in the smartphone, right? You have to make a thermally efficient part for these smaller devices. That thermal efficiency with more real estate um, is a pretty awesome thing, right? If you're talking yeah. about putting in a bigger Actually, device. There, and, there are compound uh, benefits to it, right? These devices are both fanless yeah. and silent, and that kind of feeds on the battery life as well. Right, so the benefits are like in a couple different areas. There's, hey, thinner, lighter, more creativity on the design side. Um, and I think you'll see that even in wave two. I think you'll see, you know, these first three devices look more like traditional two-in-one detachable convertibles, but I think you're gonna see some real creative designing going on in wave two and three. Sure. So there's that that size and you know, with the board being up, up to 50% smaller, right. um, that leaves creativity for not only form factor, but also bigger batteries. Yeah. 
So that's part of the battery life story. Ah. But the other part is really the thermal efficiency of, a, of, of the Snapdragon platform, which sure. enables things like the standby time, the 30 days of standby. It also it creates this instant on environment and it creates the ability for apps and things to be happening in the background and you're not sacrificing battery life. I mean, hibernation is, is there to preserve battery life today. Um, and so, um, so true connected standby really is only going to exist on these platforms um, because that the whole vision or dream of connected standby is really that even if you close your laptop or you oh, close yeah. your computer screen or your screen goes yeah. dark, it's still doing stuff in the background. Um, and in a traditional platform of today, that you, that burns battery. Um, and so that's an inconvenience for a user who kind of goes away and then comes back and opens up their device and they've got 5% battery left because things were sinking in the background. Microsoft was doing an update. With it, right, with our big little architecture, we can actually optimize for th things like that to be happening on the little cores, um, right? Um, versus the big cores yeah, and, and yeah, we can yeah, preserve battery. cores and what efficiency cores you call them, right? Is that right? Yeah. 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 So, so the big little architecture actually helps from that, from an optimization standpoint to be able to take care of those you know, utility tasks that need to happen in the background. They can happen on the little cores by then preserving battery life, obviously. Um, and and the, the real big workloads will be obviously handled by the big core. So that whole that, that whole architecture and, and how efficient it is, is, it's pretty amazing when you put it in a bigger form factor and you sort of optimize it, it really, it really kind of helps us tell this 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 battery life and days of use and you know kind of story that you've been hearing about. Hmm. Yeah, was, Mary Jo and I were just talking about this um, resume instant standby stuff this morning, and you know the PC world, Microsoft has been working toward this for a long time, but the truth is a lot of PC makers have just given up on it because it doesn't work very well, and you yeah. see a lot of brand new PCs that ship out of the. You know, factory without that even enabled. It One thing work. that uh, this does, though, is, is there's almost a convergence between mobile and desktop. These, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there mm -hmm. there will be less of a distinction between what mobile can do and what desktop can do. I mean, it's I guess it's just the operating system at this point. Right. That's why we like to say it's the best of the smartphone brought to your right. PC, right? Because right? mm -hmm. all those experience, you don't expect your smartphone to be to be dead or dormant <laughs> when you're sitting on the table, right? Things are still happening. Email right. is still we do, coming we, in. We right? do expect that on PCs. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and you don't want that on your PC, but that's the reality of the situation today. And Paul's comment's correct. I mean, in order for a lot of these OEMs to be able to claim 10 hours, up to 10 hours of battery life on their spec sheet, Right. You know, they have to be able to, I guess, at least deliver five. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so and so if they if they come at, if they try to, to deliver that connected standby experience they're, they, um, they all know their battery life is just going to be hugely impacted by that. And and they're not going to even get close to what they're mm -hmm. what they're claiming. Let me, let me take a little break right now. I don't know. Paul, do you want to keep Don around or uh, do you want to talk? It's, 845? it's, it's oh, up no. to you. Yeah, I think we need to do that. So let me just yeah, take let's a break. Talk a little bit about the Paul's, yeah. We got we lose the room in a half an hour, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, so we we're gonna keep moving here, and uh, and uh, we can always squat. <laughs> <laughs> we could just take the microphones down to the beach. It'd be fine with uh, fine with me. That's right. I, I wouldn't thinking. mind that. We're talking with Don McGuire. He is. Uh, what, what's your title, Don? Uh, I'm the vice president of global product marketing at Qualcomm. Holy cow! It's <laughs> good job. Formerly at Intel, though, I think that's interesting. There's yes. a story there. Formerly at Intel is going to be all of our stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be. That might be a trend. Our yep. show today, Bride, we'll have more in just a bit uh, from Maui and Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat. And uh, yes, Ryan Shrout coming up in just a little bit from This Week in Computer Hardware and PC Perspective. But first, a word from WordPress, our sponsor for this portion of the Windows Weekly Show. And my, I'm proud to say, my host. Actually, what I've used WordPress since the early 2000s. Not always my host. I hosted my own WordPress install, as many do. Uh, but I'm really glad I moved to WordPress.com. First of all, it saves me money. It's actually less expensive for me to let them do the hosting. And it's a heck of a lot easier because WordPress keeps it up to date, keeps the plugins up to date, keeps it running smoothly. And if I have a problem, I have someone I can call, those great WordPress support people. They are eager to help you. And, uh, and they're there 24-7. I texted them at 2 in the morning. I kid you not this morning with a question. And they were there. I love it. Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and weekends, too. WordPress.com. You know, 29% of all the websites in the world run on WordPress. It is a dominant platform. 
And that means WordPress works with all your tools. We just got on the Mac. I just got the new Mars Edit 4. Just came out. Thank you, Daniel. Works with WordPress. Of course it does. The WordPress API is, is practically a standard. But I may be getting too geeky for you because I know one of the things that's happening is a lot of people, business owners, say, well, I'm on the Internet. I've got a Facebook page. I've got a Twitter account. And I want to tell you that is not it. You need your own website, a website you control. You manage a website that can't be shut down, can't be taken away, can't be hijacked. That's WordPress. And you probably haven't done this because you say, oh, I don't, you know, it's too technical for me to. No, it's easy peasy. You go to WordPress.com. They walk you through the entire process from start to finish. It's easier than you think because you're not really doing anything. You pick a template. Now you start putting in content and you're done. You get built-in search engine optimization. You get built-in social sharing. You don't have to do anything. And I like social sharing. That means your customers, when they come to your site, they help promote your business by sharing your content, your site, on their Facebook page, on their Twitter, on their LinkedIn. That's fantastic. Hundreds of plugins, hundreds of themes. You're going to have a site that looks great, that matches your aesthetic, that runs smoothly, that's always secure. And plans start at just $4 a month. Get started today. Actually, you can save a lot. If you go to WordPress.com slash Windows, 15% off any new plan purchase. Go to WordPress.com slash Windows. Create your website. Find the plan that's right for you. WordPress.com slash Windows. Go see LeoLaporte.com. That's my site on WordPress. I love it. 15% off your brand new website right now. And uh, we, of course, thank WordPress for their support. We are in Maui. Well, we aren't. They are. <laughs> Mary Jo and I are here. <laughs> not, I'm not jealous or anything. Mm -hmm. Paul Therat is at Qualcomm's Snapdragon Leo, Tech Summit. You wouldn't like it here. It's, no, it's I hate sunny. it. It's awful. Yeah, the beach. It's warm I hate and it. beautiful. Actually, you're staying it's, at my favorite hotel in the Wailea. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful, the Westin there. Uh, so it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. Uh, our <laughs> guest uh, for this portion, Don McGuire, he's VP of Global, Global Product Marketing at uh, Qualcomm. And besides WOA, Windows on yeah. ARM. I guess there was other stuff. There was some other stuff. We I prefer think. to say WOS, Windows on Snapdragon. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's an even more felicitous acronym. <laughs> Uh, and when it's Snapdragon, uh, you know, we're, we're all, I'm, all our flagship phones are using 835s, uh, yeah. but the 845 was announced. Tell us what's new in the 845, Donna. What, where the, it's a new, kind of a new focus, it sounds like, for you guys. Yeah, I mean, look, it, one of the things that we always do with our premium chip platforms is we obviously look at trends and technology and where they're heading, um, and we, we try to do is enhance from an, not only from an experiential level, but from a technology perspective, those parts of our platform that we need that we have that actually have to be enhanced in order to deliver what the ecosystem wants. And so the areas of focus for 845 are really around a couple different things. One is AI um, and the AI and machine learning capabilities of our platform, as well as immersion. Uh, deeper immersion and all, some of that comes from the camera and the visual processing but some other things um, uh, uh, which are kind of new focus areas while maintaining our constant focus on power efficiency and thermals industry leading connectivity you know et cetera et cetera but you saw if you saw keith's presentation this morning or if you saw the press kit and the, and the, and the release that went out really immersion and ai are sort of the two pillars that we talked a lot about today and that we introduced whole new architectures um, on the onto the platform to deliver um, on uh, more for AI and and more immersion. Um, so those are the two main areas. And we can talk about them specifically or I can you know I can talk to you about AI versus immersion and and uh, whatever you guys want to want to know more about. I'm happy to to address a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if the event went, I, I know it wasn't streamed, right? So I don't know if people can, yeah, so I'm not sure if they'll make it, if you'll make it available uh, later, I guess you will. Okay, so people will be able to go and see it. It's worth watching because there's a bunch of stuff there. But like you said, you know, the AI stuff is, you know, bringing the AI down to the, what Microsoft would probably call the intelligent edge or the, you know, the last mm -hmm. connected device, right, for low latency and that kind of thing. Um, super important for lots of things on the phone. But to me, like the, uh, maybe the most impressive part was the image processing stuff. You know, that was super important. I, I, 
like a lot of people really look to the cameras on the phones as kind of the number one concern. And um, there's some neat stuff going on there, but it's not, and it's not just for photos, although that's a big part of it. It's also for the, you know, the AI plus image processing for, you know, security and biometrics and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's really, really impressive. Um, it, it's, yeah, hopefully, yeah. I mean, you need to go watch the presentation. It's, 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 it's worth seeing. Are, are all of those things Sorry, in 845 going to be um, used by PCs? Uh, they can be. They can be yeah. leveraged. Um, again, if a PC wants to, uh, to, I mean, HP talked about they have a, the first front-facing camera in right. their device that they're launching on 835. They are leveraging our Spectra ISP for that. Yep. Um, and then the future, as we see these devices take on different form factors, foldable, bendable, you know, origami, whatever uh, they might be, uh, I think you'll see leveraging more and more and more of the platform. All the AI stuff and the image processing, again, if you want to put dual cameras, multiple cameras, forward-facing, backward-facing cameras into these devices, absolutely the entire platform can be leveraged. There's no reason why it could not be leveraged. Yeah. Um, so, Interesting. Uh, they actually called out the PC in a few instances uh, today. Well, interesting yeah. question from the chat room. I mean, the, the value proposition really happens when you're mobile, when you're lightweight, when you're on battery. Will yep. we see Snapdragons in desktop computers? Is there even a market uh, for desktops anymore? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I'm not right. sure. Um, I, I guess it all comes down to what is the use case, right? Um, what do people want to do and those experiences that are required? And then what's the right form factor for that? And then... You know what is the what is the underlying architecture that supports that? Um, yeah, desktops obviously are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. It, from a mainstream PC TAM perspective, uh, there's obviously very very specific use cases for desktop computing, whether it's creation um, and in the entertainment world, whether it's AAA gaming, um, those types of things. Um, but uh, uh, I think I think what what um, you will see is at least at first in this kind of um, goes back to the announcement we made with AMD, um, right. which when Kevin Lensing from AMD came on stage, the murmurs in the audience were, yeah, were not yeah, wasted yeah. on me. I was backstage <laughs> and I, I even heard it. Yep. Um, so it was, a, it was a little bit of a surprise and a little bit of a twist. And we, we expected it to be the case. But, but, but the point that we were making is that, you know, the always connected PC um, is a, a, it's a, it's a movement, it's a category and, right. and everybody who, and everybody believes in it, right? Everyone believes that this, this always connected experience is really, um, not just a niche experience for, um, one type of device in the PC ecosystem, but it's really sort of something that has to permeate, um, the PC experience. So with AMD, you know, what we're planning on doing, as you probably saw is their, you know, with their new Ryzen platform, um, as well as their Vega graphics, Going into higher end computing, um, whether it's gaming types of devices that are also becoming, you know, more portable, um, all, you know, gigabit LT connectivity could actually be a benefit um, yep. to those experiences as well. And so if you're talking about a 15 watt system. Right. Uh, where we don't you know, we don't play in the 15 watt space. Right. With our with our integrated platform, we play in the five watt space. Right. right? right. Where, where all that battery life and that mobility and that smartphone like experience really is needed in a in a, you know, a top tier uh, Alienware, pla you know, mo mobile gaming or, or gaming PC, whether it's a gaming laptop or whatever. Connectivity, obviously, could be a, a, a nice a nice benefit. And say that's what AMD sees, mm -hmm. I think. As a, so, co as a co processor. Yeah, it, yeah. well, as, as, a, as a discrete modem. Discrete modem. Right. Okay. So, discrete. so you will see what you will see with the announcement they made with, with AMD is marrying their their 15 watt sort of GPU CPU combination with our discrete Snapdragon modem. Right um, and to to deliver a connected experience for that use case. So it's a gamer who's is just addicted to gaming and wants to be able to game everywhere and and doesn't want to be constricted by a by a Wi-Fi experience. Yeah, right? and it's a particular advantage because a lot of Intel-based systems would have a sure. yeah, a and, and look, Intel -based most, card or whatever. Most of the you connected know. PCs today yeah. that are discreetly connected are connected with Qualcomm modems yeah. today. Right, ninety nine percent of the connected oh, really? PCs yeah, today are connected with Qualcomm modems, um, even if they're x eighty six machines. Yeah, um, they're using our discrete modem, whether they're using our module, um, our M two module. Um, but so we, you know, we've been doing connected PCs from a discrete perspective for ten years wow. um, with the PC ecosystem. 
So it's it's not something that we don't know how to do. And I think you know I think um, it's a it's a great sort of a little bit of a of a tiering differentiation with with AMD and yeah. what, what we're going to do with them there versus what we're doing with our integrated platform. So Paul, yeah. I want to help you with time management because we have 15 yes. minutes in that room, That's and right. I know you want Ryan in there. Do you want to move on or? Yeah, let's. Uh, I do not want to take time away from Ryan. But well, Don, uh, frankly, <laughs> I, I would. I, I would. would I don't. Yeah, that. I don't have a problem. But uh, <laughs> it's been great. It's really been great having you uh, on. It's nice to hear uh, directly yeah, thank from you. Thank you so much for having me. It's yeah, been my pleasure. You. Really, really interesting. Stuff. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you, Don. Thank, thank you. you, Don McGuire, VP right. Global Product Marketing at uh, Qualcomm. We'll get you. Let you guys get reset. Uh, I'll do. A, I'll take a break, and while you're doing that, how about that? And we will move on with Windows Weekly, our special edition. We're, uh, we're triple-headed today. Mary Jo's in New York. I'm in California, and we're in Maui. Paul has the, I'm sorry, Paul's got the tough duty. Uh, at the Snapdragon conference going on uh, right now, the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon Tech Summit. Ryan Schrapp from PC Perspective, and uh, This Week in Computer Hardware joins us in just a moment. But before we uh, do that, let me mention our sponsor for this section, uh, Rocket Mortgage. If it's time to get a home loan, if it's time to refi, it's time to visit rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Rocket Mortgage is from Quicken Loans, the best lender in the country, number one in customer satisfaction year after year. But that what, one of the things that makes them the best is they think about you. They think about the customer first. And they realized that the mortgage experience really wasn't keeping up with the 21st century. It was dated. Uh, it was primitive. It was slow. And they decided on a client-focused technological revolution, Rocket Mortgage, was born. With Rocket Mortgage, you know exactly what's going on every step of the way. It happens fast and it's easy. You don't have to go collect paperwork. They do it all for you and they do it so fast and easy. You can do it on your phone at an open house and get loan approval before you leave within minutes. It's simple. You'll understand every detail. It's You'll be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. And whether you're buying your first or your tenth home, Rocket Mortgage, makes it as the easiest you've ever had. Do it all in seconds based on income, assets, and credit. All you have to do is give them some basic information. They have trusted financial relationships with all the financial institutions, so they can get all the other information they need. They pull it, they check it, crunch the numbers, and then they offer a home loan right for you. You choose the term, the down payment, the rate, and they give you the approval and you're good to go. Whether you're refinancing or you're applying for a new house, buying a new house, Rocket Mortgage on Quicken, by Quicken Loans is the way to go. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. We thank Rocket Mortgage for their support. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Bookmark it. Or, you know what? Start the process. Just get the account open, get ready to go, so you'll be ready when the time comes. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Are you guys on the beach? <laughs> or just no, overlooking the beach? Our lines are on the beach. beach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm staring out at the beach. Oh, yep. man. So there is that, right? This yeah. Is, this I'm just staring at Brad. Good as... <laughs> oh, well, he's a yep. bit... Well, never mind. Um... <laughs> So welcome, Ryan Shroud, oh, PC Perspective. Brad's going to Brad's gonna slide, slide in like he does. Uh, there. there he is. <laughs> right, let me slide him in from the other side. All right. Yep. Uh, Dueling nice. Brad. What do we call it? Brad's sandwich. <laughs> no, don't call it that. <laughs> I think that I saw that on Urban Dictionary. It's not what you think. Not very cool. filling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ryan. What do you think? Snapdragon 845. Uh, Snapdragon 845 looks really good. Um the, the, Don was out here talked about it. You know, I'm 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 a, I'm a hardware guy, right? I come from it from that perspective. So I'm really looking at, uh, you know, their claims of 30% better GPU performance, 30% better CPU performance. Those are not small margins from a single generation. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a little bit curious. They're much they better than show. Intel's been doing generation to generation. That's for sure. Right. Right. But they didn't show any uh, performance metrics to back it up. Right. So they didn't show any traditional benchmarks. They didn't show any kind of comparisons to competing parts or even really any like no graphs. There's no there were no graphs in the presentation. I'm sure that was a an intentional decision they made. Um, I think Brad, I think Don set the stage for what the argument's going to be. Yes, it's numerically it's benchmark slower. But yeah. you won't notice the difference and the other mm -hmm. benefits will outweigh that. Right. I mean, that's what they're going to say. 
Yeah, it's it's a it's a uh, it's gonna be an interesting decision point for consumers to make, right? Because there like there is gonna be a performance difference. Whether or not you can see it in the workloads that you deal with is obviously one question. Um, but there will be a difference for some people. If you do Photoshop, if you're doing any kind of even basic video editing, there's gonna be a question of whether or not this is uh, enough horsepower for you. Right. But for somebody like me, where I, you know, when I'm on the road, I'm not doing video editing in my machine, but I am doing some kind of basic photo editing and I'm uploading stories and I'm doing more uh, intense productivity, I guess. Uh, am I willing to trade the battery life benefits that they offer for those performance hits? And I think um, my inclination is yes, I, but that's it's going to be a personal decision. But for like smartphones, for me, for laptops, it's always been battery life. For that's me. interesting because actually I, I think both days there was a point in the keynotes where they mentioned that something along the lines of battery life being the number one concern that they hear from customers. And that's true across laptops and phones. Yeah, uh, it, but what's interesting is is until Qualcomm came in and started doing this, there wasn't anybody that really <laughs> <No, there wasn't. laughs> acted on it. You know, right. like mobile phone providers have always done that, but then they were always, hey, uh, you know, eight hours is fine. Like we're going to make it a little bit thinner. We're going to add a little bit another, you know, more feature set to it. But uh, everybody seems to be pretty – they haven't stopped buying our devices, right? So clearly they're not that upset about battery life. So, in, uh, but so I, Intel's going to survive with the enthusiast and pro market, obviously. But is this a th how I mean Intel's seen this coming for a while. Is this is and they've never yeah. been able to, you know, the scale was a failure. They've never been able to hit this yep. mobile market, and now this mobile market's encroaching on their laptop market. This has to be a huge threat for them. Yeah, it, yeah, it, for sure. Um, and if you look at their technology roadmaps, they don't really have anything on it that that scales down to this power level um, for at least a year. Right. Um, so the, it does give Qualcomm, uh, a, I don't want to say a head start, but some competitive advantage of they're going to be able to push this in a way that nobody could. Um, I don't know if you guys talked about it at all, but the the connected standby thing and, and Microsoft has not defined what that meant. And I think the reason they haven't defined what that what that actually means, like what the specifications are right. that you have to meet to hit it is because Intel can't do it yet. <laughs> and, they, and they don't want to make a spec yeah. that Intel can't meet because even yeah, if yeah, yeah. Qualcomm makes this amazing product, look, like they still have to work with Intel. They're still the largest provider of processors for notebooks and they will be sure. for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I, I think we're, 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 we have this vague cloud around that term because not everybody can meet it. And right. Intel's probably like, hey, could you maybe not create a spec that we absolutely <laughs> cannot meet yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's for 12 to 18 months? Uh, and also, they're, I mean, they're you, talking about, uh, sorry, they're right. talking about modern standby now instead of connected standby, right? Like sure. that's the new sure. thing that everybody's starting to talk about. But I just don't know what so, that means. Yeah, what is modern? Me neither. What is modern no. standby? <laughs> well, it's, it's obviously know, newer I, than the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's very 21st yeah. century. Yeah. Well, Apple's probably going to, I wonder now that we're, Microsoft's going to Windows on ARM, yep. Apple clearly has been thinking about this. They've got these A11 chips, these very, very fast ARM-based, Not they're not Qualcomm, but they're right. ARM right. architecture. But are ARM-based, yep. I would imagine uh, Intel's looking over at Apple saying, guys, <laughs> please, <laughs> please, yeah. please. Well, that, it is interesting, you know, Intel has ruled the hardware side of the PC industry for eternity, and... You know, now that the PC has been kind of relegated to the smallest of the big digital platforms, and Qualcomm is coming in and taking, it, potentially trying to take the the mainstream part of this thing. It's like we're getting down to some kind yeah, of weird situation where you know, what's left for these guys, I mean, and which is a weird thing to say. They're they're the market leader. I mean, I you know we got to keep that in perspective. Um, the the threat from Apple is probably more significant to Intel than the Windows one because right. Apple is most would be the most likely entity to just say, "At ah, we're done." And just go completely the other direction, or you know, fifty percent or ninety percent in one take. They're already Whereas, trying to do that in the iPhone, and they're really trying to get yeah. those Intel modems out of. Uh, or actually, no, this the other way around. They want to get the yeah, Qualcomm modems the Qualcomm out of there. Modems. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Feeling, Intel's got a great the modem feeling. business ahead of it. Those guys will. Play, <laughs> Apple will play the two companies against each other oh, yeah. because they can and because they have to. But eventually, you get the feeling they want to be part that they want that to be them. You know, yeah, and they when they get do. there, they want to make everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they'll they'll kick anyone out. Uh, yeah. No doubt about it. For, so, were yeah. you surprised yeah. when AMD strides on stage? Ryan? Uh, I was. Yeah, because uh, they just Don made a deal. Right, like the, they just made a deal the, with Intel. 
Right. Well, the the murmur was like, oh man, AMD is is you know, are they is there Maybe some kind of merger happening? Yep. Is yep. there some acquisition happening? Yep. Um, uh, you know, obviously it was a little bit more uh, mainstream kind of announcement than that, but it's still it's still good, right? And and I still think there were, there were some people around me that had questions about why would why would Qualcomm bring somebody out who makes laptop processors, even though they are partnering Actually, with Actually, I might be able to answer that question because it was a company that was not named Intel. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I, they would have brought anyone out if, you know, for that purpose. It, it, it did seem a little odd to say, here's our event where we're launching all the notebooks we make. Here's another guy who makes notebooks. Well, well but you, you know what? They're complimentary. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, I don't know that they see that as a threat because that is, uh, by comparison, kind of a niche market from a unit perspective. And um, they they're going after the mainstream, and of course they don't they just don't play in that market. I mean, that, and I think that's basically what he just said. You know, and we all know from looking at a roadmap that AMD will not play in their space for the foreseeable future either, right? If Intel is not going to get down there in the next two years, year to two years, then AMD is not going to. What about either. the Adreno graphics in this eight forty five, Ryan? Is it uh, are we getting to discrete graphics levels or no? We're not even close. No. <laughs> no, no, we're still not there, right? So like a 30% jump is significant and 30% more power efficiency is even sure. more important for these these mobile devices. Um, you know, I have seen, I don't think they showed any of this. I don't, whatever. Uh, like I've seen mainstream games running on these Snapdragon devices, okay. right? So wow. on, Dota, League of Legends, oh, really? on notebooks. Oh, wow, right? okay. So they can do it uh, at, you know, 1080p or lower, lower frame rates. You know, it, it's the... The yeah, my daughter could they probably fly a plane. You don't necessarily want her to. I'm <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Can it run Crisis? That's what we all want to know. Uh, yeah. Definitely not. No, yeah, no. It, but it's 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 pretty good, but it's not it's not going to take over AMD space or Nvidia space anytime soon, right? Like uh, for for these devices, uh, MX150. What what's in here? Is there a discrete GPU in here? Yeah, it's a 1050. Yeah, 1050. That's that's a that's a huge leap. You're never going to hit that. Yeah, what Adreno yeah. is. Yeah, but they're they're just targeting different things, right? That that 1050 uses. 40 times the power. Oh, yeah. That so, they had to make this thing bigger just to house to the heating, you know, right. the So, in a system. way, what we're really seeing is a fragmentation of the market, uh, a slices of the market, which in the past were, were handled by software alone, you know, one laptop yeah. to fit it all. Now sure. we're really seeing some real distinction between different hardware platforms. We're, we're also, I think we're going to see what really matters to people here. I think that's the most interesting thing. You know, they, they talk about battery life. I think it's real. You, you think it's real. Um, and I've, and I've talked about this. You know, PC makers have kind of tried to find these niche markets that can be successful, premium PCs, gaming PCs, and so forth. But from a unit perspective, those things aren't very big. For a company like Qualcomm to kind of come in and say, you know, we're, we're grabbing at the, what we think, what, what I think is the mainstream big part of the market. It's not just, it's not finding a, like a niche that's successful. It's finding the mainstream big part of the market and trying to be successful with it. Mm. Intel struggles because... They have to de they have to develop for everybody for everything right from the 18 core desktop parts to servers to notebooks they tried to do mobile space right and as it turns out that's really really hard to do or maybe impossible if Intel could do it I, yeah. I lean towards nobody being able to address all these markets uh, very effectively um, mm -hmm. so but if you're Intel you're now you're getting attacked in all these different areas right AMD's coming at you in server space and desktop space. Qualcomm's coming at you here. Um, it's it, it's tough, right? I, I imagine they're having some difficult engineering conversations over the next several months. Yeah, no, I mean, I think Intel has the same issue on the hardware side that Microsoft does on the software side, and for the same reasons, they've tried to be everything to everybody. It's yet to yeah. be. I mean, I think we're taking for granted that people want more battery life, but well, that's the, that's that's what I mean. That's the question. That's yeah, and it, there's certainly. Uh, we're going to find out. Even though most people will, these would be plenty fast for, enough for, people are funny. I hear people all the time say, well, it's just too slow, as if it's yeah. going to make any difference to them. They're just, <laughs> but they're aware of the benchmarks. They're aware of yeah, the, yeah. And, and psychologically, yeah. that, that hits them. Well, that, and that's why this is such an interesting thing. I mean, I, I, we're going to find out, you know, it's, if you ever watch House Hunters, you know, the people uh, look at three houses, they pretend they have these different things, and then you get to the end and you find out what they really want. <laughs> Right, right. right. People hundreds. don't really know what they want, do they? That's right. We're going to find out what people want. And I think that's what's really interesting here because everyone has this opinion. Well, I can never run that or, you know, I need this or whatever. And, you know, we're going to find out. Yeah. yeah. Is there a price advantage? I mean, these don't seem much 
less expensive. Yeah, I think that there is still. I kind of. I kind of don't feel there's a big price advantage, right? So I think like the in general, the four gig models are five ninety nine. The eight gig models are seven ninety nine. You can get a lot of Intel notebooks for seven. Yeah, that seems pretty. Like, that almost seems book. pricey. That almost seems yeah. pricey for what. We're it's. Doing. I think it's more than some people were expecting, right? But well, but I think that's important because I, I, I one of the things I think that really got Windows ten S off to a bad start was these real low ball education type pieces. I really do. I just feel like they just tripped right out of the gate. I mean, I think by put, hitting in the middle of the market like this, they're saying, look, these. These are mainstream computers. These are the, yeah. you're going to want yeah. one. You know, it's, they're not for your they're parents. Worth not for your kids. They're worth seven hundred bucks. You. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. But do they feel yeah. like they are worth it? You guys got a little hands-on time with with yeah, them. I mean, I, mean, I saw right. some people saying the ASUS one felt cheap. I, I no, I don't. I don't I feel. I don't. I don't feel like that. Yeah. Like I mean, they seem like. Standard six to eight hundred dollar notebooks, right? So like the HP is Actually, a is I mean, a convertible. HP, HP might be more expensive. I mean, I oh, really, I, I would. No, they haven't said, but I mean, based on the pricing of the Elite X2 today, or I'm sorry, I keep saying that the NVX2 today, um, and I I think they're going to rev this to the you know the Intel version to look like this new version. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that came in around a thousand bucks. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's really what you're coming down to. Is your question of is they are they too expensive it comes down to does a consumer value that battery life and the connectivity mentality more than the performance, right? So if, if I were Intel right now, I'd be right. going to every media outlet and saying, performance, performance, here are these performance. benchmarks. We yeah. got these devices. Yeah. Yeah. We're three times better here. We're two times better here. Here's the app compatibility problems that we found on their device that don't exist on ours, <laughs> right? They're going to they're gonna do that. They're going to do that that kind mm -hmm. of marketing tactic. Um, and oh, and I, you know prepared. this. I mean, Intel has literally reached out, I think, to everyone who attended this conference to make sure that, you know, but don't forget us, guys. You know, well, before, and you, they yeah, and, yeah, it's like, yeah, hey, yeah. here's our thoughts. And you on know, what might and you know, Qualcomm knows that's the first thing Don addressed right out of the box. You know, it's the old megahertz myth back again. Yeah, but you know, look, the, Intel does have very real advantages still. You know, perform the performance stuff is real. You know, the compatibility is real, um, and the variety of devices is real. I mean, there's no yeah. doubt about it. Uh, Qualcomm also has some advantages, and this is what I mean. We're going to find out now. I mean, what things matter. Want. Different things yeah. matter to different people. Yeah. You know? Um, is it a simpler chip uh, system to design, Ryan? Is there is it a bigger system on a chip? Is everything? It sounds like there's more stuff in the die. It's there, there's more stuff in it, but it's less complex and it's a smaller die. And it's a smaller die, so it's a smaller PCB. Um, at one of the, I think it was at a Mobile World Congress last year, they they actually tore down like a Core M, an Intel Core M notebook, and showed the PCB of it and showed the PCB of uh, Windows on Snapdragon device. And uh, there's there's a significant advantage to Qualcomm there, and that that flexibility, I don't think it necessarily shows in the first generation, but in theory, it gives the OEMs, the ability to design things a little yeah. bit differently, a little yeah. bit thinner, or my hope is a little bit more battery in those same devices. Um, and then the thermal differences, I think, are important as well. Intel still needs to point out when some devices are fanless, right? All of these Qualcomm devices are going to be fanless. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you can get a Surface Book that's fanless. Uh, well, that's not true. You can get a Surface Book with a lid that's, never mind. <laughs> Actually, no, you can't. <laughs> you lie! Like, liar. You know, liar. My, you know, I have an X1 Carbon here, and I love this machine, but it, so, every fans. once in a while, you yep, wake yep. it up from no, sleep, yeah. and the fans kick mm -hmm, on, and I'm like, yep. well, that's annoying, right? Yep. And it's, yep. it's just one of those things. It's, it's, it's a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. that is not directly measurable and displayed on a graph that Qualcomm and its partners have to convince consumers shows value, is and, valuable And to you're them. right. We're not going to see that yet because these are really, I'm sure they're taking existing designs and just basically yeah, putting yeah. an arm. That, and that's, but you know <laughs> but in a generation or two, you might see some really unique, yeah. you know, new I'm nux. Not, and I'm new, two minds of that, on that one, though, because if you can point to two PCs that look identical and say this one performs a little better, this one gets twice the battery life, you can make a very simple uh, decision. The one thing I'm a little nervous about with ARM-based laptop or devices is that they're going to be like electric cars, where they don't look like cars. They look like goofy sci-fi experiments, mm -hmm. and why can't they just be cars? I know. <laughs> you know? I know. I, I agree with you. There's some aspect yeah. of that uh, to, to it as well. Actually, it's interesting because we just saw the new Nissan Leaf. We're going to have it Saturday on the new screensavers, <laughs> and they've intentionally made it not weird-looking. Right, mm -hmm. because I, I think that turns off some people. You right, know, it um, does. I didn't want yeah. those alien eyes on oh. the old leaf. <laughs> they really look weird, like a bug. Uh, do okay, you, so do you have a heart out? Do you need to get out? Or yeah, can we, we do this? 
Yeah, we do have to get going. Right. Um, yeah. Well, this has been th great. Th I have to say. They haven't I'm, quite given us a shepherd's crook yet, but I think it's because they can't find it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mary Jo and I are kind of uh, odd, uh, you know, odd. Mary Jo, I'm sorry for another uh, Xbox themed uh, Windows <laughs> Weekly. No, you know what? I actually, this I actually care about because I care a lot about battery life. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, well and I'm, I think it's a new path. People. It's a new way for uh, PCs. This yeah. is something, this is a big deal. Frankly, it is. I think. Yeah, I think so too. I yeah, agree. I really do. And I think this uh, always connected PC thing. And remember, Intel's part of it too. I mean, I, I, I think that this really is the future of the mainstream part of the PC market. Mm -hmm. I, this is it. And adopting mobile technologies uh, is so obviously huge and necessary. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. We'll see what happens. Yep. Well, thanks to uh, Ryan, Ryan Shrout from uh, This Week in Computer Hardware, PCPer.com. And I'm sure, Ryan, you'll be writing this thing up like crazy on slides to get in my email box now yeah yeah you got a ton Story of stuff of to life. talk about yep. yep um but thank you for being here thanks too to don mcguire of qualcomm paul thanks for lining this up and making it happen uh I'm gonna rip off my clothes and jump in the ocean leo that's your reward that's your reward it's a beach day now enjoy yep. enjoy the rest of your uh, time out there in maui and mary joe foley of course thank you for being in new york Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mary, it's a pleasure. Uh, Mary, yes, I can tell. Mary Joe Foley is at all about Microsoft.com. Paul Thorat is at Thorat.com. His books are at leanpug.com, and we do Windows Weekly. Normally, it's a different uh, different time today, but uh, we'll be back to our 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1900 UTC slot uh, on Wednesday next for another thrilling, gripping edition of Windows Weekly. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Aloha.